And so I just invite us to take that beautiful consciousness and just notice how your body feels in this moment. And as you close your eyes and go within, take a deep breath in, feeling that air coming in through your nose and then slowly exhaling it from your mouth. And with every breath, taking all that joy and excitement of the day, of the game that's coming, but bring in your attention right here to your heart, to the heart of God and the love of God and the truth of God that is each heartbeat. And with every breath, allow yourself to inhale joy and feel the texture of joy. And as you exhale, exhale love. Imagining that love is a color, your favorite color that is painting this world in such beauty. And with every breath, just anchor in this love and imagine that you're walking through a garden and just take in the beauty of that garden or the lusciousness of the landscape. And allow yourself to be bathed in the light of the divine light that you're drinking in with your eyes and your heart and your mind and your soul. And with every breath, just going a little bit deeper into the heart. And with that inner eye, just looking around, noticing the details of the divine drinking in the lavender sky, the lusciousness of the pine tree, whatever comes to your heart. Allow yourself to find your safe space, your sacred space in this vast beauty. And imagine that you find somewhere to sit and take a moment just to Feel your feet on the earth. Feel the sun on your skin. Feel your heartbeat that is so full of love. And for the next few minutes, just inhale the beauty and exhale joy. Inhale the light. Exhale love. And in your own rhythmic dance of the inhalation and exhalation, allow yourself to go a little deeper, accepting this good and radiating it from your being. Breathing in, breathing out. Just allow. Breathing in beauty, breathing out love. And with every breath, feeling the presence of God.
And notice how the light that you've been inhaling circulates as you're being. And take a look around just one more time at the vastness of God. Imagine that you stand and you bow in deep gratitude. Taking one more glance, one more breath. And then that exhale, just deep, deep gratitude. And in that gratitude, imagine turning around and taking the path back towards this moment and this place with us together, breath by breath, step by step, heart full of love, heart full of light. We breathe in. And in that exhale, being fully present in this moment, we allow ourselves to gently open our eyes, full of beauty, full of joy, full of love. We have arrived. Yay. Thank you so much, Reverend David. And what a beautiful community. I'm glad that we got to chat a little bit before. I know who I will support in prayer for the football game. <laughs> The 49ers, of course. So um, we're going to talk about uh, lo love is a paintbrush. Life is the biggest art. And this came from a Buddhist monk from the Thich Nhat Hanh tradition in Plum Village. I was on his Facebook page. His name is, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Fa Hu. And when I saw that phrase, I thought that perfectly describes what we in a new thought call love and law, the creative process of understanding the presence of God as love. And the, and the power of consciously creating our life through the universal law, that aspect of God that simply receives. And it made me think about just, you know, all the artists that I know and all the art shows that I've been to and how there's this process of creating that we all have this capacity within us. So we're going to do our basics today. It's January. So we're going to go back to the basics of love and law and, and the four kingdoms of consciousness and then how to paint your life with love as your paintbrush. So what I understand with, you know, I didn't grow up in new thought. I grew up uh, in the Catholic church, but when I discovered that there was a power for good in the universe and I could use it, it opened up a new way of living and being that I always innately felt the presence of God as love. And then to understand that there's these amazing ways that we can co-create our life with spirit was just innovative for me. And so with love as our paintbrush, think about your life before you entered unity. How are you creating your life? What tools were you using? What level of consciousness were you at without judgment, all right? We're gonna talk about those four levels of consciousness because it's really important to understand the evolution of consciousness. So it's natural that, you know, growing up, I grew up with a dualistic notion of God, but I always felt this presence. I always felt this love. I always, I was like this metaphysical, mystical little mutt. And for me, God felt like love, this big presence of love. But I didn't understand that my thoughts and my choices were creating my reality and that there are patterns that I received in childhood, no judgment, but it was just the patterns of my parents and the patterns of generations and the patterns of the community that really weren't serving my highest good. And when I began to understand the four kingdoms of consciousness, as Michael Beckwith um, you know, offered us, I began to understand it's like, what level of awareness am I coming from to create my life? Am I creating my life from a place of love? Am I creating my life from a place of fear? Am I creating my life from these divine qualities? Or am I creating my life from this fear condition-based consciousness? No judgment, but it's the process and the practice. So the very first thing, love is the power and the presence. Love is source energy. Love is my life, your life, all of life. To understand that love is all there is, love harmonizes everything, love expresses in through and as everything, then there is no space where God is not. But we can look at the world and we can see where love is not being expressed. 
where we can see the consciousness, the false consciousness of separation and illusion of other is actually being activated. And that can become confusing until you start realizing that there's aspects of our lives that are unhealed and unskilled until I get these skill sets, until I get these artistic tools. For me, life is a paintbrush and life is the biggest art. Art for me is actualized, realized truth. The truth of the oneness and the allness and the wholeness of God that is my life, your life, and all of life. And so the first kingdom of consciousness is when I'm thinking life is being done to me. It's that victimhood, you know? And, and trust me, I could have won an Academy Award in my younger years for that. You know, everything's happening to me. Life is against me. And then you find these paths and these practices and most of us get, you know, connected with affirmations. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, oh, I can use affirmations to, to, you know, shift my life, shift my consciousness. And so life is being done by me, right? So these two levels though, the to me and the by me, I still say are from the ego part because even by me, it's still just about me. I'm not understanding that I'm actually this expression of, of the divine. But it's when I go into understanding that my light is the light of God, that spirit's expressing in through and as me, that I can co-create my world consciously, that I move to that third kingdom of consciousness, which is through me. I become that channel. I become that vessel. So I'm moving into the spiritual understanding of what is operating as my life. But it's that fourth kingdom of consciousness as me, that I really understand this is a way that this living, infinite intelligence, this spirit that I call God, whatever this immense, infinite, vast presence is, is operating in, through, and as me. And so it's through those kingdoms of consciousness of three and four, through me and as me. And we will vacillate through the first one by me, I mean, to me, and then by me, because, you know, we have all these different things that we're working out. We're spirit in this human condition, but we want to cultivate the practice, our spiritual practice, our artistic tools, as I'm going to call them, in order to be in the consciousness of through me and as me. So then I can make the choices from the wholeness and allness of God and not from the default patterns of my childhood. I teach mindfulness to children. And one of the things I teach them about thoughts is that we have about 6,000 thoughts a day, science has said. 80% of re wait, 80% are negative, 95% repeat themselves. All right. So this is why with new thought, it's a new thought that's going to change our life, that cultivating that consciousness through the power of affirmations and affirmative prayer is where then I begin to develop the skill sets to then actually paint the world that I really want to live in. So our tools, our artistic tools. So every artist, they have paintbrushes, they have sketch pads and canvas and, you know, watercolors. We have these spiritual tools that will allow us to choose in every moment how we want to show up in the world how we want to experience life. We have affirmations, affirmative prayer, life visioning. We have, uh, we were talking earlier, angel books, things that we can read, contemplation, and that demonstration of life from the cultivation of a consciousness that there's a power for good in the universe and expresses as me. And then when I understand the law, that aspect of God that simply receives this word, simply receives a consciousness, the feeling tone, then I know that I'm planting those seeds into the universe. And right there in that moment, I'm able to create my life as art. I'm able to choose not only my responses to situations, but how I want to see the world how I want to be in the world, where I can consciously co-create a world that works for everyone. And so this is where, when you're doing the spiritual practices, these are our tools. And then the techniques are how we understand universal principles. And this is why the daily practice is essential to paint the world that you want to paint. We want to activate conscious playfulness. We want to come into this world as, the, as when we were little. So when my, I grew up, um, in Dallas, you know, I have an Italian, Mexican, Spanish family. We've got a very close family. And then as my siblings, you know, got married and had children, long story short, I was in LA. I came back from LA with a long-term illness. I got to be home with my nieces and nephews. And what I noticed with each one of them was their unique way of being and seeing in the world. And then what I realized later on was the gift of being with them was that 
that phrase that that uh, what Jesus said in Matthew 18 to be like little children, because if you're around little children, they are constantly playing. They are constantly using their imagination. They are constantly creating new worlds and having fun. And Charles Fillmore says, imagination gives the man the ability to project himself through time and space and rise above all limitations. Children do that naturally. And so I have this vivid memory of my niece, Macy, who's now 20 and about to graduate from Oklahoma University. And we were outside playing because I would go outside with the kids. They didn't know I was sick. It was like, okay, I'd have to go take naps and stuff, but I was there to play with them. And what happened was they cultivated within me that mindful awareness of beauty, that mindful awareness of play, that mindful awareness of creating my life in a way where there's joy. And I'll never forget it because we're in my parents' backyard. My mother has like this fire engine red uh, swing underneath the elm tree. And Macy found a turquoise crayon. And she took that crayon. She goes, where do you want to go? I'm like, oh, let's go to another dimension. So she took that crayon and we started creating doors and portals to other dimensions. And so we called it our magical, mystical turquoise crayon. And then we went on a carpet ride to other universes. And it was in those playful moments that I recognized the power of imagination, the freedom in imagination and the freedom to create in any moment the experience that I want to have. And even to this day, it just fills me with so much love and joy just thinking about that story. But think about your life. Like, think about your life. At what point, if you're not playing, do you think you stop playing? And if you are playing, in what ways do you play to create your life? What ways do you paint your world on a daily basis? What is the art of your life, moment to moment, breath by breath? We forget that we're all artists. See, so we understand love is the presence of God. The law is an aspect of God that we can consciously co-create. We are an expression of that living spirit. We understand these spiritual tools that cultivate and sift the consciousness from the lower conditional state of separation into that allness and the possibilities. And we use our practice to then navigate our world. We will have circumstances. We will have opportunities where we're healing or there's grief or a job is lost. And then we get to turn back to these tools, to our spiritual practices that in the moment bring us fully present and engaged. It's like, what life am I seeking to experience in this moment? And when we understand that when we are cultivating our lives, we're aligning in those divine qualities, the quality of joy and love, harmony, peace, wisdom, and light, that we are that radiating expression of the living God. And so to create, George O'Keefe says, one's world takes courage. And so we step into courage, but with consciousness. We step into creating our life through the power of understanding that we are a unique, authentic expression of the living God. And how many years did it take for us to arrive perfectly at this moment so that we no longer hear the, the you know, the criticism, the uh, conditioning of society, the shoulda, woulda, coulda, what you need to be. And if you're in a place where maybe you're still navigating and opening up from that, good, you're here now with us. Because to paint your world, you get to choose in every moment how you want to live your life. I have another story from Kate. I mentored this young girl. She was in first grade. So she's probably in eighth grade now. And Kate was an innate genius artist. I mean, we can all create art in our life. You know, we're all artists in our own way, but some people have like a gift in a certain area and her gift was drawing and painting, but she was also a storyteller in first grade. And I was watching her color one day while we were, you know, just doing our mentoring session, bringing in some extra mindfulness tools for her. And I asked her, I go, Kate, when did you, like, where did you learn how to be a great artist? And when did you start doing this? She goes, oh, Miss Veronica. And she just kept coloring. She goes, everybody's an artist. You just have to practice. And I was like, the, the genius of a child. And that's how we create our life through our spiritual practices. That's how we create our life, moment to moment, connecting with the truth of who we are. That's how we paint this world in love. Because what we see in the world sometimes is that people don't understand their own divinity. They don't understand that they can paint their world with love. They don't understand that source energy is infinite and there's more than enough for each one of us. And we can create a world that works for everyone. 
And so I'm reminded from uh, dear Reverend Norm Bouchard, one of my ministerial teachers at Centers for Spiritual Living and colleague who recently passed away from cancer. And they had a celebration of life yesterday. And Norm was, I mean, he was talking about living your life out loud. Reverend Norm was the epitome of like the magnet. You know, magnanim I can't even say magnanimous of God, because Reverend Norm believed in the power of the divine and the mystery of life and fully engage in embodying it in the moment. And Reverend Barbara Bew, who was doing his celebration of life, said even at the end of his life. So when he was going through chemo, Reverend, he would come in, Reverend Norm and all these other people with him. He'd be dressed up in costumes. He wanted the people at the cancer center to know that they can actually still embody joy even in the midst of the deepest suffering. He brought in love. He brought in joy. He painted their world with the possibilities. And even though he made his transition, at the end, he still was so committed to this understanding of spirit, God, the infinite nature of his life and God, that he told Reverend Barbara, he had his hands out like this because she's like, what words of wisdom do you want to share, Norm? He goes, I only have time to play with love and joy. I only have time to play with love and joy. And he kept saying, live a life of meaning, live a life of connection, live a life of service. I only have time to play with love and joy. So do you make time to play with love and joy? Do you allow yourself the gift of painting your life with love and joy. The invitation in this moment, just like when you see an art work, you know, um, when they had the Vincent van Gogh exhibit here in Dallas, I, I like to see art from far and I like to get up close because I'm not a painter. I, I do photography and writing and I'd like to watch the strokes. I, I look at the strokes. I'm like, wow, how'd they do that? And I go back and I go back in. And it's the same thing with our life. Every thought, every choice, every action is just a stroke of the the bigger picture that you're painting for yourself. Every moment, every breath, every connection, every opportunity to be with beauty, every opportunity even to cheer at a football game is a moment to be in connection with joy and love. And if we use love as our paintbrush, to the best of our abilities, imagine what the world would look like. Imagine what the world would look like. Like So we connect with beauty on the outside to understand the beauty on the inside. I allow myself, I allow myself the gift of being fully authentically who I am. I consciously practice so that I may understand that not all people are awake and aware, and I'm certainly still on my journey, but I want to mirror to people this ability to live with joy, to live with love, to bear witness to the suffering, to bear witness to grief, to bear witness to the confusion, to have your human moments, to be anchored though in the truth of who you are. Because love harmonizes everything. Love heals, love reveals, love ignites, love inspires, love can walk us through any hard process. If I allow myself to be anchored in that, if I allow myself to paint the day in that, because these last three years have been really challenging and life is challenging. Like I said, I experienced a 10 year illness, but I found, I found new thought at the beginning of it, but it was really after it. That's where I healed completely because I found the ability to co-create my life. I let go of the stories that the doctors told me that I'd never be well. My nieces and nephews brought me to the magic of the moment, chasing fireflies and butterflies, standing underneath the tree with the wind blowing and my nephews screeching in utter delight. And it's in those moments that I remembered that there is something greater and it's really seeking to experience itself as each one of us. And then I, when I found my spiritual community and I found this ability to create my life and use my spiritual practices. So I begin the day with a cup of coffee and I write for 20 minutes. That's my key practice. And then I pray for about 20 minutes. That's my second, I have three key practices. And then at night I meditate now, if I feel like I'm just, you know, like not in a place to meditate alone, I go on to YouTube and I meditate with the Upaya Zen Center. So I notice though, with those three key practices, it stabilizes my life that lets me navigate the difficulty. But what I notice though, that even with the most difficult of circumstances, nothing, nothing steals my joy. 
I've experienced loss these last three years. I've experienced deep grief. I experienced the pandemic like each one of you. But what I realized there was that little spark within me that remembered that there's a power for good in the universe and I can use it. And that joy, which is like that little light that was always there, cannot be diminished by any external condition that is within me that I allow myself then to paint my day, to actualize and realize the truth of my beingness, that in every moment I can create the art of my life. And at the end, I can celebrate the joy of my being, just like Reverend Norm. He lived life fully, gourmet cook, amazing teacher, beloved husband uh, to Scott. And that's how we are being invited to paint our life with love. Yes, you're going to experience frustration. Yes, you're going to experience annoyance. I can guarantee you during the 49ers game, that's going to come up for you, right? But you can anchor in love and be present to the joy of being of the moment and the miracle of your life. Because all we have is this present moment. All we have is the gift of the now. And within us all is that love that can never be diminished. So the invitation is, as Leonardo da Vinci said, one can have no smaller or greater mastery than the mastery of oneself. That when you can master oneself, meaning when you recognize the presence of God, when you recognize that you can use the law consciously to co-create your life, when you start navigating like, oh, I'm in kingdom conscious number one. That usually happens to me when I'm driving, you know, that whole victimhood. And I'm like, oh, Veronica, that's lovely. You need to shift. But that we can be kind and loving to ourselves. But imagine the life that you want to create now and for however long your incarnation is here. How do you want to paint your world? How do you want to live? How do you want to see life? How do you want to drink in beauty? How do you want to be moment to moment? And when we're having those difficult emotions and we will experience grief, we will experience loss. And yet at the same time, love can never be lost and joy can never be diminished. And my life can never dissipate. It just shape shifts. But what are you willing to do to allow yourself to paint the life of the greatest possibilities, to love in the deepest, biggest way, and to be present no matter what's going in the, on in the world, to be present to the truth of the power and the presence of God, and that good must come forth from all of this, and that you are that place. So that when I see you, I revel in the beauty of the art that is your being, that you become that mirror in the moments when people are having difficult times of what joy and love can transmute and transform. So the invitation is that you are an artist. You're the artist of your life, every moment, every day, and every way. And allow yourself to accept the good. Allow yourself to expect the good. Generously share the good, but consciously co-create your life. So at the end of it, even though personally, I'm very selfish. I've had too many friends die. I feel way too young including Reverend Norm, but they died and they lived fully, each one that has, had transitioned. So here's your invitation. Get your spiritual tools, get your artist palette, get that understanding of spiritual principles. And every day and every way, wake up with that deepest intention that today I'm painting my life with love. Today I'm painting my life with joy. Today I'm painting beauty everywhere that I am. Today, the power and the presence that is God reveals itself in every moment as my being. And I am grateful. So art, actualize, realize truth. You are the living spirit, incarnate, authentically, in through and as you. And remember that. And so let love be your paintbrush. Paint the biggest art piece that is so fabulous that at the end, you'll just bow in deep gratitude for that experience and expression of your life. So I just invite you into the art of life, into the beauty of being, into the joy of love. Because my nieces and nephews and the thousands of children that have taught me mindfulness, they, that I've taught mindfulness to, they have brought me to the beauty of the simplicity of life, to literally, literally screech at butterflies and fireflies, to literally, literally paint their day in joy, and then to allow that creativity of love to experience itself 
so that in every moment you're expansive and not constrictive. You're not denying your good, you're celebrating your life and you're moving in the directions of your truth as your life, as your art. So I invite you this week just to take a look at like, how am I painting my day? How am I dancing my day? Whatever art form that works for you. How do you create your life? Are you doing it from a place of deep love? And it's okay if fear comes in. Call in someone to pray for you. But remember that light, that truth, that wisdom is right there, right there as you're being. So just live as if there's no tomorrow. I only have time to play with love and joy, as Reverend Norm said. So play, actualize consciousness through play, paint your world with wonder and joy, and be that light to those who don't understand that this is what we are here to be in this world. So I thank you for your time. I'm actually gonna pray us out. Is that okay, Reverend David? Can I just do a little prayer? So I just invite you to take all this energy and just, if you're willing to close your eyes and just breathe in, breathe in this love, breathe in the love of the presence of God, breathe in the power of the truth of God. And as you exhale, allow it just to be radiating from your beingness. Because they understand that there's only one power and one presence and one truth and one reality. That is what I know and I call God. That indeed this allness and wholeness of God is expressing and painting itself in through and as each one of us and all of life. All of life. All of life is God. And so I just speak my word for each person here as they are a magnificent expression of actualized, realized truth, the art of the divine that's seeking to reveal itself in their individualized, perfect ways. And how beautiful that we can take this palette of possibilities and paint our day to allow wisdom and joy, love and peace, harmony and strength just to reveal in every moment. And that we can be that beautiful mural that people see and wonder is like, oh, I too can be that. And that we mirror to people the reality that we are spiritual beings having this human experience. And when we live from love and we light our life from love, that indeed the world can work for everyone. So I acknowledge the truth of God as each person here. I celebrate the art of each person here. I celebrate the joy of their being. And I see God and only God through each one of them. But that this art is so beautiful, this art is so divine, that love indeed paints itself in every moment as the biggest art piece of this world. And that indeed that each one of us is that expression of the love of God in every moment. And so that I know that the brilliance of God is so magnificently here right now and expressing throughout each person's life every single moment, every single day. I know that it is good. I celebrate the beauty. I dance in the divine of the light of joy. And I know and call forth all that is necessary for healing and wholeness and that revelation of truth. And in those moments where we may forget, when that little bit of amnesia may try to sneak in, then the light of truth is revealed by someone that stands before us who mirrors to us the magnificence of love as our life. So as I call this good, and I call this very good, and I bless each person with the power of the presence of God that is right here, I am grateful. I am grateful for this opportunity to share, but I'm grateful for this community. I'm grateful for Reverend David. I'm grateful for everyone who shares their art and shines their light and shares their gifts in this world, because to collectively together, <laughs> what a beautiful world will manifest as we continue to reveal this in every moment. So knowing that it's good, I just know that this word and the activity of God that's expressed and in through and as each person here is already so, and even for the 49ers, I call it good. I just let this word be, knowing that indeed love is present, light is here, beauty reveals itself, and it is good. And that is just how it rolls in the mind of God. So I let go. I let this word be. I allow it as I celebrate it, and we affirm it together by saying, and so it is. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine 
what my eyes would see when your face is before me surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for your spirit or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence or to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak at all i can only imagine i can only imagine i can only imagine when that day comes and i find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah. If he's around me by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for your spirit, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you, I can only I can only imagine